All right, guys, so this is the Ender 2 Pro. So yeah, it's a pretty nice size printer. It's quite small, you guys can see it here on the desk. It doesn't take up too much room, especially when you fold in this spool holder. It becomes quite narrow. Now this part does stick out a bit here, past the actual printer base quite a bit. But yeah, other than that, it's quite small and not very tall either. So let's start here on the top. So we got this nice heavy duty handle. It is a plastic injected piece, but feels very sturdy. This is where our bolts here go in into the channel to hold it. And on the back of it, our lead screw goes through there. It would have been nice to have a little bearing maybe, but yeah, it's just kind of in the air. And you obviously can grab the whole printer just by this handle. So if we flip around, you kind of see how that lead screw goes in there. And this is our extruder. So this being a pro model, kind of disappointing to see that they use the plastic extruder. I wish it was metal as that's not a, you know, terribly expensive upgrade but yeah I guess you could upgrade it yourself which is kind of cool too I guess you can make a few things better on this printer if you wanted to starting with this but the good part is is they do have a brass insert right there so that makes it where it's not gonna wear it out real quick so yeah this definitely is fine for getting started so this is our x-axis motor that moves the hot end and our extruder motors under here beneath the extruder you see this is where we plugged it in and also the X here. And then the X end stop switch plugs right inside there. And if we go down, that's our lead screw with the Z axis motor, the coupler there. We've got the Z axis end stop switch here. The spool holder swivel part where we installed it right there. And this is a really cool design. As you guys see, it's very convenient. And we do have a nice rubber foot there. A cable there coming out to the screen. And one thing to note that I don't think I mentioned yet that most of the base, the bottom part of the printer is all plastic. On the side here, we have the main wire that comes out to all of the stuff up here. And then here we have where we switch the voltage selector. And we got a few wires coming out of here, which is for the heated bed. And then the other ones for the Y motor and end stop switch. And on the bed frame, there's a bolt that goes to the switch and that's what clicks it. So continuing this way, Way. We can see this is where our power cord will plug in. It is fused and we've got our on and off switch here. So let's go up from there. We can see this is our build plate that's magnetic. We do have a heated bed. We got these pretty decent springs, decent size also knobs. And yeah, everything is, you know, quite small, but seems to be well built. And our printing volume is 165 by 165 by 180 millimeters tall. So yeah, pretty small, but you know, quite reasonable for this size printer. Now going this way, one of my favorite parts about this printer is this storage bin that slides out the side. This is quite clever. This being such a small printer, we have the power supply towards the whole back here and then we have storage on this part of the printer and then our electronics on the other part so yeah very well executed here and I kind of threw all the stuff that we had with the printer in there and it all fits very good including the cutters so yeah I really like this kind of design as it really cleans up all of your tools and extra parts to the printer so going up from there we got the Creality manufacturing sticker and there we can see our build volume 150 watts and weighs about 4.6 kilograms and again guys Guys, the whole base here is plastic except for our channels which is the important thing are metal so looking at the front this is where we adjust the y-axis belt and it's quite clean here but over here we have micro SD card slot and also looks like a micro USB port if you wanted to connect the printer to the computer our display which is a old-school rotary selector there's a protector over it let's go ahead and pull that off so this is definitely a throwback to the old school days which is quite nostalgic for some of us but in the age of colorful and touch screens this is kind of retro for sure and we got four pretty large squishy rubber feet on each corner and so going back to the top we got our hot end and we can see it's kind of got this new style cover that the latest creality printers have this red accent we got parts cooling fan here and the heat brake fans here up front and not sure if you guys will see the heat brake but it's kind of like a round one and if we go underneath, we can see we got our silicone sock on our heat block. That's our tip. And that's where the parts cooling fan blows underneath the tip. And so out of the top, we got our Bowden tube that goes to our extruder and then our main wiring there going back. And this is where you adjust the tension on the belt for the X-axis and our end stop switch is right here. And as you guys can see here, we don't have a CR touch. So no auto bed leveling or any kind of compensation. So this is definitely going to be more manual kind of printer, but because 
because the bed is quite small, it's very easy to dial it in. So yeah, overall a very nice little printer and I really like the size. And for being called a pro model, I wish it would have had a little better upgrades. But for the price that it goes for, it's a pretty good value. So for the next part, let's go ahead and plug it in, power it on, preheat it, and level the bed. All right, so I got the printer plugged in here on the side. And before you do power it on, make sure that your voltage is set to the correct value depending on where you live because if you are in Europe where they have higher voltages and you said to lower you could damage the power supply and if you're in the North American region like the United States you're obviously going to choose the 115 and if you leave it on 230 you might have erratic things happen to the printer and it might not even turn on at all so but in any case let's go ahead and hit the switch and we can see the LCD lit up. It says Ender. And you guys probably can't see that as it is quite bright and plus we're on an angle here. But it did power up very quickly, which is nice. So there are some fans running, so there's a little bit of noise. But they're not too loud and it's reasonably quiet at idle. So we're gonna look at the screen in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and click on here and go to Motion and then Out of Home. This is gonna check, make sure all of our axes work. So there goes the X, the switch works, the Y, and that works and now the Z is coming down now another thing you might want to do is you might want to tighten up the knobs here on the bed underneath to kind of compress it down a bit so I'm just turning it clockwise to tighten and our end stop switch is right there is where the nozzle is going to stop All right, so it looks like all of our switches and motors work. So now I'm gonna go into the menu and click on temperature and then hit preheat PLA. And it does give you an option for the hot end, the bed or everything. So after clicking that, we should start preheating. And as it's doing that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the screen. So the screen is very bright. Uh, it might look a little washed out on the camera, but it's actually quite vivid and vibrant. So you guys can see the layout. This is the old school Marlin look. So over here it says Ender 2 Pro. We've got the nozzle target and the temperature, the bed target and where it's at now. So it's almost at 60. This is the fan icon. So whenever this thing's like animated, it means the fan's running and that's for parts cooling. Then we've got the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And here where it says 100%, that's the print speed and then here we have a progress bar with the time and that's going to be when you're printing and down here it says 3d printer ready so this knob here if you click on it it goes to another menu and you can just scroll it to go through the different options here and it's very responsive no lag at all so the first thing here we have motion and this is where you're going to do like out of home disable steppers and individually home so basically all of your motor controls here temperature is going to be nozzle bed fan speed and the pla preheat and cool down no media as we don't have no SD card installed and configuration is going to be more of your advanced settings so you can actually turn your power outage on and off here and you'll want to turn that off if you have any issues with spiralized mode. Then here you can configure the PLA preheat and ABS also store and load settings and your language and below that we got about the printer so this is what it's running on the board info and you guys can see that right there and thermistors are also all working and a runaway is on also so that's a good thing but yeah that's pretty much it guys it's quite simple and you get pretty much everything that you expect and so for the next part we're going to be manually leveling the bed and the way you do that is you're going to go to motion and then auto home and then once the printer homes you're going to click on disable steppers and that's going to give you the ability to move everything around and so now that everything can move we can align it here and you'll need some kind of sheet of paper. I'm just using a post-it note here. And so if your nozzle is too far away or too close, you might have to compress the bed up or down. So it looks like I'm about the right area. I actually have to go up. So you wanna be really careful about pushing down on the x-axis because you might bump it off. But if you do, just home it again and then release steppers and keep going. And we're probably gonna have to do that a couple times as we level here. But since this bed is kind of small, the offsets are not that large on this size. So, all right, so I'm gonna do the gap here on the side. And then we're going to go to this side and we're going to loosen it until we start feeling some friction between the nozzle and the bed and now we're going to head to the back and so basically you're just going to go around until you get it pretty close from corner to corner and also make sure you are preheated so the bed is hot and the nozzle is hot also so i'm going to go ahead and home mine again so go to motion out of home and then I'm going to disable the steppers again. So we're going to carefully check it again. So yeah, guys, you're just going to go around and around until you get it close. And then we're going to go to the center and check that. And mine 
seems to be just right there also. So if you need to go up or down, you can kind of turn each knob on each side the same amount and the whole thing will go up or down a bit. But yeah, take your time and do this right. As if you get this pretty close, you won't have much issues later when you start printing. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up a bit. So let's go ahead and grab our micro SD card, which is nice that it comes with a USB adapter and the card is eight gig and it's gonna plug in right here, probably upside down, yep. And it does click in there. And now I'm gonna click on this knob and go down to print from media. And we do have some files on there. Well, I guess one G-code file is a test and it says 2Z, which I believe is the little rabbit. But before we can do anything, we still have to put our filament in. And I'm just gonna use here a full roll of this red as the coil that's included is quite inconvenient. And if you're gonna get into printing, you obviously need to buy some filament, which is available at pretty reasonable prices. And I'll have links in the description. So if we grab our snippers, we can cut the filament on an angle, which will help us feed it in easier. And so our roll will go here on the side, on the spool holder, just like that. And then the filament, see if we can go to the side here. So basically it's gonna go off the roll into the extruder, and then we're gonna push on the arm to make it go through the gear. And then we can push it all the way through, and it's gonna go through the tube down into the hot end. You can go into the screen in the move section, use the extruder to push it through, but it's much easier just to do it yourself. Just release the arm and push the filament through until it comes out the hot end. And there it goes, you guys can see that. It looks like there used to be green there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and purge it until we get some red coming out. And <laughs> simple as that, our filament is in and we're ready to print. So let's move this out of the way. And we'll click on the knob, scroll down to print from media, and click on the G code that's included, which is called 2Z. It's gonna ask us to start, and we'll click print, and it should be starting here shortly. All right, there it goes. That didn't take long. Of course, we were preheated already. So I'm hoping my offset is good. Actually, let me check real quick while it's going down if we can tune that or not. Okay, so under tune, we do have baby steps for the Z. I'm gonna get that ready just in case. Well, it looks like we don't need it because we leveled our bed very well. Yep, it looks like a pretty good offset there. Well, actually, I think it might need to go down just a little bit. Yeah, it does. Go down a bit. All right, so I did have to go down just a little bit on the baby steps, and I'll show you guys that in a second. But depending on how this file was sliced, it could just have a pretty large gap between the first layer. So we were pretty close on our leveling, but it's good that this printer has the Z-axis offset so we can compensate up or down. But yeah, everything looks good there. So let's take a closer look at the screen while we're printing. So it's pretty much what we saw earlier, and you guys can see the fan animation there. So we got our temperatures, and then the X and Y coordinates, the speed, and then here we can see that we've had four minutes since we started, and this progress bar will start filling up as it goes through the print. But the more important thing is if we click on the button, we can see we have more options here. So we got pause print, stop print, tune, temperature, configuration, about printer. So the main one here will be under tune and you can adjust your speed, nozzle temperature, bed temperature, fan speed, which is at 67 right now, the flow rate of the extruder. So if you wanna slow that down, you can do it here or speed it up. And then we have baby step X, Y, and Z. So the important one is going to be the Z and you guys can see I have mine offset to 0 0.075. So you can do your offset here electronically, but I'm not too sure if it's gonna save it or not for next time. So you're probably better off just adjusting your bed correctly. So if you know that you need to go a little up or a little down, you can just turn each knob on each side of the corner of the bed that amount to set your offset permanently. But in any case, it does have the baby step Z here. So, yeah, and if we go back, we also have temperature, configuration, and about printer here. So yeah, that's pretty much everything you'd really need while you're printing and it's all there and pretty easy to access. All right, so we're printing away and everything looks perfect. The printer overall is pretty quiet, but there are some noises and I'm gonna bring my microphone in. So most of the noise is coming from the fans, but there is a little bit of stepper sounds. I think it's because it's traveling quite quick, but it's ever so slight. It's nothing loud or obnoxious. So I would say this printer is on the quieter side, but not on the ultra quiet side.
All right, so our first print is done, and it's this rabbit, which is called Toozy, and it's actually a little bigger than I thought it would be. So you guys can't see this, but on the screen it says it took one hour and 31 minutes and 16 seconds. So let's go ahead and pull off the build plate. And this thing is pretty flexible, so let's see how easy it is to get this model off. And look at that, perfect. So it looks like it did stick very well, and then it just popped off. It does appear that we were perfectly off the build plate, as even our prayer chair came easily. So I'm gonna put this back, and let's take a closer look at this little rabbit here. So right off the bat, you guys can see how well the layers went down. Very nice, so the bottom looks pretty much perfect. And look at that, guys, that's pretty incredible. And that's the thing about the Ender 2, is that because of just one axis like this, or should I say no support on this side, just free floating. It makes it where there's no binding or anything funny that can happen on this side, which makes the up and down extremely accurate. And normally that results in very, very clean lines. And that's exactly what we got here. It's quite impressive. So yeah, very happy to see that. Even around here, everything is smooth. You guys can kind of see the layer lines there around the face. Pretty much perfect. There's a little bit of sagging underneath. And then into the ears, which is quite a bit of retractions in between. We do have a little bit of stringing. It's very fine, but nothing severe for sure. And yeah, just perfect layer adhesion all the way to the top. So yeah, very promising for this Ender 2 Pro. And to be honest, I did expect it to be at least this good, as the original one was extremely good. So I'm very happy with the results we got.